Oh, what I, I see, both of yours are shared screen. Hmm. Say that again. Both of them says. Uh, well, that's um, fine. It, it, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, if we if we are both uh, sharing, then that's fine. It's okay. Um, I need to do it another one. To see how we can do it better in our class tonight, how to study the Bible. We're going to be looking at is I'm running. We're running behind already, so I probably lesson one will flow over into uh, next week. But let's just go ahead on and get started talking, and then we'll catch up with the slides, hopefully in just a little bit here. As soon as uh, I'm going to try it again. Ah, guess what? There it is. <laughs> I just I just clicked on the other button to say multiple people can participants can uh, share. Uh, so that maybe that helps. So you, you uh, okay? Yeah, it, it works now. It. Yeah, I clicked it on. Yeah glad to be saved tonight. I'm so glad to know Jesus. I'm so glad to have the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Missionary Galloway is in for a great time tonight because anytime you talk about the Holy Ghost with a bunch of Pentecostals, you go, <laughs> you're going to be having a, a great time. But let's talk about this Bible, the Bible, the, the God's uh, map for us, his directional for us, how he leads us, how he guides us. We're going to be talking about how to study the Bible. We're going to be looking at the basic steps of inductive Bible study, inductive Bible study. And I will talk about that in just a minute so that you will understand what I mean by inductive Bible study. That is, if you don't already know. And by the way, if you have already learned a lot of these things, that's wonderful. You'll be able to ingest it more freely and perhaps even share a little bit more with us. I'm Missionary Jerry Rogers or Sister Jerry Rogers or Sister Rogers or Sister Jerry or Jerry Rogers. <laughs> I answer to all of them, but I'm from the Glad Tidings Church of God in Christ and I'm one of the teachers and amazingly, I also happened to be the director of our Bible Institute at Glad Tidings, and it was just on last Wednesday that we ended our Bible Institute. And now here we are flowing over into your Bible Institute. What a great privilege, and I'm so happy. But we're going to look at how to study the Bible. Let me just ask you uh, 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 a question. Let me just ask you, why even bother? to study the Bible. Why do we study the word of God? Why do we study the word of God? Just only have time for just a couple of answers. Unmute your phone and give me what you have to say briefly. Why study the word of God? Learn the word. Understand say that word. again. To learn the word, understand. To what learn it. the word, all right, yes. To study, uh, to learn to to learn the word. Anyone else? To learn Bible more. God. Uh oh, go ahead, Missionary Smith. I'm sorry. To learn more about our God. To learn more about God. Amen. That's great. To learn the word. To learn more about God. And go ahead, whoever was speaking. I said, because the Bible leads us in the right direction to know oh more about God. My goodness, the Bible leads us in the right direction to know more about God. And I see that Elder Ivory, I believe it is, put in the chat uh, to know God and his direction. Uh, someone put, I can't, I for some reason, I can't seem to get up. There they are. I can see them now. To uh, For instruction, Sister Beverly, amen. A missionary uh, Omer, I believe it is, uh, says to study, to show thyself approved unto God, or to get to know God in his direction from Elder Ivory again, from Solid Rock for approval. Oh, my goodness. Missionary Burnett, say, we we getting the key. Oh, wait a minute. I think, that was, 
I think that may have had something to do with the technical part, maybe. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I didn't think you, or maybe we, we study the word of God, you get the kinks out of us. <laughs> you know us, we can spiritualize everything. But let's look at a few reasons, though. I agree. I totally agree with all of you right down to getting the kinks out. <laughs> it, but it reveals God to us. I believe someone said that. Somebody said that you see these scriptures here, Romans 10, uh, chapter 10 um, and, at 10 through 17 and John 5 and 39. Uh, John uh, 10 and 17 says, so then faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing by what? The word of God, hearing by the word of God. What are we hearing? We're hearing from God when we study the word. We're hearing the words of faith to help us believe the word of God. And then John 5 and 39, Jesus told those people, he said, search the scriptures. He says, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, but these are they which testify of me. He's talking about the scripture. Remember, we say it reveals God to us. Jesus says that the scriptures is what testifies of him. It is what testifies of God the Son, God the Father, God the Holy Ghost. Why study the word of God? Because it transforms our life. Psalms 119 and 9, wherewith shall a man, a young man, cleanse his way? He asks, what, what does it take? How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to thy word. All right, Romans 12, one through two, I beseech ye therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And, but he said, do not be conformed to this world. Be not conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind. What is this transformation uh, that is happening? Where is it coming from? It is coming from prayer and the word of God transforms our lives. It reveals God's will to us. I believe someone indicated that in the chat. It, believe, it reveals God's will to us. And uh, Psalms 119 and 105, so many, we already know that. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my pathway. It leads us into the will of God. The lamp and the light leads us into the will of God. Oh, here's a good one. It keeps us from straying. It keeps us on the right path. Psalms 119 verses 10 through 11, it says, with my whole heart have I sought thee Oh, let me not wander, wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. It keeps us from straying away from God, from straying into the wrong path. And it nourishes us. Oh my God, it nourishes us. It feeds us, it builds us up and strengthens us and causes us to be formed into the image of Christ. Jesus said unto him in Luke 4 and 4, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. It nourishes us. That's where we get our real food is from the word of God. It builds us up. Saints, remember these things. I know you know them, but remember because it helps us 
to add value to studying the word. We, the things that we value, we give attention to. You know that scripture that says, study to show thyself to prove unto God the word and that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That word study, I want you to look it up during the course of the three weeks. Look it up in a Bible dictionary. Look it up in a lexicon. Find out what that word study means. Yes, it means an intellectual kind of study, a kind of studying where we read, a kind of study where we're writing some things and, and doing some things. It means that kind of study. You're sitting down with your Bible and so forth and so on. But it also means the root meaning of that is that we give attention to it, that we pay attention to. Be sure, be sure to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We've got enough people these days that are wrongly dividing the word. This is why you have so many people that are so mixed up and so confused, even in the church. Sometimes I am shocked at some of the stuff that I hear people say. And I know that they got it from somewhere that has nothing to do with what the word of God says. And they're telling it to other people, a workman that needed not be ashamed, not to be made shamed, not to be made shame before God, a workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now that doesn't mean that we never make a mistake in our interpretation of scripture because we're growing. I know I'm growing. I've seen some things just over the last, uh, since the, the new year has come in, I have learned more about some of the scriptures that I thought I knew. I keep growing. That's why we refer to the Bible as the living word of God, because it keeps growing and growing. And when it grows, guess what? We ingest it and it grows in us. Why do we study the Bible? What did jo the Lord tell Joshua after Moses had died and told him how, to, uh, how he was going to manage, how he was not to be afraid, how he was not uh, to uh, be fearful of taking on the job as a leader of God's people. But he cautioned him and he told him that this book of the law, okay, and it was a book that they had. It was the only writings that they had. But what he was saying, what I have given you as my law, as my teaching for you and for the people, this book of the law at that time, it was the Ten Commandments, you know, is what they had. And the rules, a few rules that, uh, that came in with that. But the book of the law, he said, shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that, that thou mayest, what, observe to do. He says, not to depart out of your mouth, meditate on it and observe to do it. All that is written according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And then thou shalt have what? Good success. Make thy way prosperous. Have Good, not by naming and claiming everything that comes to your mind, not by giving somebody a hundred dollars who said, holds your hand and tells you that you're going to be rich. You're going to be, no, 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 no. He says the book of the law, observe to do the word of God. Then you will make your way prosperous. Then you will have good success. Praise the Lord. And we know that the blessings of the Lord maketh rich and adds no sorrow to it. So for this three weeks, what are we going to be focusing on? We are going to focus on the three basic steps of inductive Bible study. 
inductive Bible. Now, don't get, don't get, um, what in the world is that? I've never heard of that before. It is what basically a lot of people do all the time, uh, do parts of it rather, and don't even know it. It is the most uh, used and probably the most common, one of the most common methods of studying the Bible. It's just that now we have defined it. It is the inductive method of studying the Bible, consisting of three basic steps. The first step is observation, second, interpretation, third, application. Observation. What does the passage say? When you're reading it, what does it say? How do you know what it's saying? You observe, you observe. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Observation, what does the passage say? Two, interpretation. What does the passage or the scripture really mean? Interpretation, what does the passage or, or scripture really mean? really mean, <laughs> not my imaginary, you know, I thought of or whatever. What does it really mean? How do you get to that place where you know what it really means? And three, application. How does this meaning apply to me? All right, we have to get to application. We have to get to the place where we put the word of God in shoe leather, as the old people like used to say, put it in shoe leather and walk it out. All right. That means I understand what it means to me and I live it out in my life. The three basic steps of inductive Bible study are what? Just I know you're on mute, but say it with me. One, observation. What does this passage mean? say. Two, interpretation. What does the passage mean? What does it really mean? And then three is application. How does this meaning apply to me? Now, I said that we're going to be doing uh, inductive Bible study, inductive Bible study. <coughs> Excuse me, please. Inductive Bible study, or let me just say inductive, the word inductive itself, is simply defined as using specific observations, evidence, or patterns to make conclusions, all right? In other words, your conclusions are based upon something. Your conclusions are based upon observation, upon evidence, and patterns. All right. It means to collect information and draw conclusions from what you observe. Okay. Not from what you imagine, not from what somebody told you a long time ago or on the TV or whatever, but you're drawing conclusions from what you observe. Let me tell you what's special about this inductive method. The inductive method of study uses the Bible itself as the primary source of information about the Bible. In other words, it allows the Bible to teach you about the Bible, not channel 60, <laughs> not prophet this person or that person, Although we gain knowledge and understanding and help from people that God has anointed to teach us. But we need to understand that they must be teaching you from the Bible, not from what they heard or read or whatever, but from the Bible. And then the things that we hear and the things that we read the things that we refer to become additional support, all right? 
that bolsters our understanding and lifts and increases our understanding of what we have read. I am in no way saying you don't need nobody else, just read the Bible. No, we do, we do. Remember the book of Ephesians? And he gave four chapter, I believe, and he gave some what? Apostles, and he gave some pastors, and he gave some he, he this, and he gave some that, and then he gave some teachers, okay, because we need people to teach us. But the main thing, the main source of information is the Bible itself. All right. In the inductive study in this in this kind of study, you and I explore the scriptures, consulting other sources like, you know, Bible dictionaries and commentaries and things. We consult them only after you have made your own thorough examination. You don't start out with a commentary. It is a problem and a temptation of many preachers and missionaries and teachers and even saints of God who have an opportunity to come before people and speak about the Bible. There's a great temptation to just panic and go straight to somebody's commentary about a particular scripture and just read what they're saying. And then that becomes what we say. But in inductive study, in the inductive method of study, you can consult other uh, tools, but only after you have made your own thorough examination of that scripture. And then those uh, tools hopefully will add light to what you just read or just give you more information in general. All right, there are many different types of other uh, ways to study the Bible, other methods of studying the Bible. Many of them we use a lot, you know, the devotional method where you select a short passage and, and then you just think on it, you meditate on it. Sometimes we testify, you know, I read that scripture this morning, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And I've just been thinking about that scripture all day. Thanks that scripture has just blessed me all day. That is one of the ways of studying. You go to that scripture and then you selected a short passage you know, they that dwell in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of, and you meditate, you chew on it all day. That's the devotional method of study. And it is a valid method. I should say that all of these other methods are valid methods uh, from time to time for a specific time. All right. And, but there are times when you just need to just steal away and just dig down into a book of the Bible. You just want to dig it out. I mean, I, my daughter and I sometimes do Bible study together. Some of you all know Kim. My daughter and I live together. And uh, sometimes we do Bible study together. And we are so tempted to keep going back to the book of Acts. Oh, my God. We have read the book of Acts so many times, but then there are other scriptures too that we've read a lot through our Bible studies, but uh, you chew on that. And then there's a chapter summary method. That's where you read a chapter several times. You write it down, write down the summary of the central thoughts and the main points. And let me just tell you, for your, I let's call it joy work, as Ella Levias used to call it many years ago, when he and I used to teach a class together, he didn't want to call it homework. He called it joy work. So for your joy work, uh, tonight I'm going to ask you to read a chapter. I'll give you the chapter, all right? And I want you to read it and we're going to do something with that particular chapter. So that is one way of studying. Then there's the topical or the theme method where you select a, a topic and you explore what the Bible has to say about it. Like I like to explore the topic of faith, all right? I enjoy doing that. Or you may want to do a character study. That's where you select a Bible character and then you research all the verses you can find about Methuselah. <laughs> well, you won't find many. But anyway, you know, a Bible character. So that is one way. And then there is the word study method where you take a word and define it and you use it in different methods, uh, including 
uh, the, you, you, you break it down and you're setting the context, the definition, the historical and cultural information about that word and how it is used. It is a word study method. And that's an interesting way of studying parts of the Bible. Because you see, you can't start studying the whole Bible at one time. Because at different times in our lives, we have different needs to study different things. But we should always have our hands and on the book and our hearts in the book as often as we are able to. So <clears throat> how do we get started with this inductive study method? Well, has anybody ever been uh, to in the... Um, were any of you ever in what we call the Foundation for Discipleship classes at Glad Tidings? Have you ever been in that? If you have, open your line and just say, I have. Because one of the, maybe that, maybe you haven't been, okay? But uh, one of the classes you, I used to teach, and a, a lot of different people are teaching it now, in Foundations for Discipleship is a class called Personal Devotions. And one of the first things you learn when you become a member of Glad Tidings and you get in this first required class called Foundation for Discipleship is personal devotions. How to get started uh, with your uh, uh, building a relationship, a personal relationship with the Lord. But well, that is the same way you get started with inductive Bible study. How do you do that? First of all, you plan a time. Plan a time. And that time, ah, uh, let me see. What did I do? Yeah, there you go. Yet, let me suggest that that time not be after you have watched all of your good favorite shows on TV and it is now 10 o'clock. <laughs> or 11 o'clock, and you're thinking, well, I really should study my Bible, you know, what do you think, what do you think is probably going to happen? Open the line and just tell me, what do you think is probably going to happen if you choose 11 o'clock at night or whatever, after you have had your meal, cooked dinner, had your meal, watched all the news, watch the TV up oh, and now it's 11 o'clock and you got to work in the morning. And what's going to happen? You're not going to study. You're not going to study. Your eyes going to start closing. There you go. Sister Lisa said you're probably going to fall asleep. Okay. Uh, our Charles Huey, Huey said the same thing. <laughs> you're probably going to go to sleep. And there goes the Bible study which gives us one of the reasons why people don't study the Bible. the Bible. One of the reasons why people don't study the Bible. What do you think that reason? Give me a reason why some people don't do study the Bible. Oh, I would say I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> what are some reasons people don't study their Bible? Procrastination. Procrastination, thank you. Thank you. You and Elder Ivory. <laughs> you said I was doing the bar. Sister Lisa said because you're busy. Anybody else? You can open your mind and yes. say or laziness. Lazy. You just <laughs> lay. Who said lazy? Brother Shandy. Bro, you are so right. Laziness. Anybody else? The and enemy some distractions. And, Somebody. And some of the things are difficult to understand. Uh huh. Uh -huh. I said that. Go Fear. ahead. Fear. 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 Who is Clinksdale on online here? All right. All right. The Clinksdale I, yes, I had said, you want to tell us what you said in the chat? Yeah, what I put in the chat is something that I've actually heard someone say to me is that mm -hmm. they don't study the Bible because they believe that it is a book of fables and fairy tales. There you go. They don't believe mm -hmm. the word. They don't believe it is indeed the word of God. I was over talking to somebody. I'll take one more because it's almost time. My goodness. Come on. Wow. Uh, quick, quick, quick. Okay. Otherwise, somebody, I'm in the, on. somebody in the chat said no motivation. No motivation. And that's true. But I tell you what, 
I wasn't motivated to, to eat broccoli the first time <laughs> I tried it. But you know what? I ate it until I started craving it. The more I ate it, the more I liked those lamb chops. The more I ate it, the better that asparagus tasted. All right. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Plan a time. Plan a time. A time when you're going to have time. Plan a place. And I don't have time to get your suggestions about bad places to study the Bible, but let me just tell you one. I suggest that it not be in the bed, okay? Late at night, okay? Or when you're extremely tired, because we know what's going to happen. Plan a time, plan a place, and always begin with prayer, because it is in prayer that we pray to the Lord to open our eyes that we may behold the wondrous things out of thy law. The Bible says in 16th chapter, St. John, he will guide you into all truth. So now we are ready to get started with the first lesson, which will be observation. And it is 815. What are they going to do, Sister Burnett? Are they going to snatch us out of this room now? What happens? At the bottom of your screen, it says leave room. You can click I don't, that button right there. I don't see that. I don't see that. So I guess I can't leave, but maybe you all can. Oh, I, yes. Um, I don't see it. Any, I never uh, saw you, any you, of the you things. You have, two, you have two screens? You want to pick your I other have, one? I'm looking at that one, too, and I don't see it. No. Okay. Well, I'm going to press my blue button. Down. Okay, let me down to the board. You, you still have about four more minutes if okay, you have let me tell questions you, and let me, answers. Let me tell okay. you this. I, I don't have time to go into observation. And I wanted to give you an assignment. Okay, I can't give you. Uh, yes, I can. I can. I want you, would you please write this down? Please write this down to read the 16th chapter of Acts for our next class. Read the entire chapter. Read the 16th chapter of Acts. I think the Clinksdale iPad just got up to go get a pencil <laughs> and paper. There you are, he's back. Read Acts chapter 16 and observe it. Read it with your mind and read it with your eyes. Don't just read it with your eyes. Read it with your mind and read it with your eyes. And when you come back to class, we're going to build on top of that and see if you can pick out some wonderful things that were in that chapter that will help you going forward. We're going to look at the first step which is observation. How do you observe the text? The five W's and one H. The five W's and one H, all right? It has been my desire if we had finished that, I think we'll start, I think <laughs> I'll do it with what I have though. I want to get this outline, get these, um, slides to the people that are in tonight's class. Sister Burnett, when we get off, can you help me with that? Because I know that the Zoom person has a list of the people that were in the class. They should, they should be able to pull that, uh, extract that information. And if we can extract it uh, and we can track down your email addresses, then I want to, as a matter of fact, would you just put your email address very quickly uh, along with your name in the chat. Put your email address along with your name in the chat. Let's do that real quick. Let's do it real quick. You make sure it's correct though, <laughs> because it will be bouncing back if it is not correct. Your name and your email address. And I'm going to give you my name and email address too. your name, 
your email address, check it out to make sure that it is correct. All right, there it is, there I am. Okay, all right, Sister Burnett, help me snap, take screenshots of these. If we, if we can't do anything else, I'm gonna take some screenshots of myself, I think. I hope I'm good at hitting the wrong screen sometimes. Actually, Double I do have all their email addresses already and I can you, uh, send You do to have you. them? Yes. Okay, that is wonderful, wonderful. I am so sorry we didn't get a chance to go any further, but I guarantee you next week, if you just come back again next week, you're gonna be blessed. You're going to learn something. We are going to learn together. Well, do you trust me? You trust me to come back? Do I yeah. see a question? Is that you? Okay. God bless you. We are going to come back again and believe God. Remember, we pray leading into Bible study because it is God that must enlighten our mind. If God doesn't reveal himself to us, we won't know him. Praise the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. Thank you for this gathering. Thank you for meeting us here tonight. Father, I feel you. I feel your presence here tonight. You are going to bless us over the next two weeks, and we are going to praise you. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Thank the Lord with me. Come on, open up your line. Open the line and thank the right. You're about to bounce Stop out of here. Stop. Open your line and thank the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now I see. Now I see the sign that says leave now so i'm Amen. leaving god bless you oh, all bless you. see you next week amen 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 glory to god i want to ask bro clink scale because he was <laughs> I he was he was in there Sister Beverly, I saw you. Glory to God. That, uh, so let me say, everybody, I think most of the people are back now, most of us anyway. Um, so uh, is there anybody that wants to make a quick comment? I can take like two or three comments and real quickly, and then we're going to move on. Glory to God. Well, I have just one, one question I was trying to get at, just to make sure. It was read and observe Acts, the 16th chapter for us. The 16th chapter. Got it. That was it right there. Wonderful. Wonderful. Anybody else comments or questions? Did you get your homework? Did you get it ready? Did you did you understand it? <clears throat> Sister Sybil had her hand raised. Sister Sadler? Um, I enjoyed the class and everything, but I could do without the slide uh, the smart remarks. Sister Sadler? Sister Sadler, that, that really wasn't necessary, but all right. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? All right. Yes, ma'am, Sister Beverly. I'll see you. And then Sister Smothers, we'll do those two. Come on, Sister Beverly. Sister Smothers? Sister, Sister Beverly S first. Sister Beverly Sister was first. Beverly. Go ahead. <laughs> She's trying to unmute. There you oh, go. Um, I just, I just enjoyed the um, class so very much. And Missionary Rogers, it was fantastic. And I love that you called it joy work and not homework. <laughs> that, may, that, that sounds good. You know, sometimes they say it's not what you say, but how you say it. Yeah. So we're going to have some joy work this week. And it's going to help us find joy in God's word. So I just wanted to share that with everybody. I really, really did enjoy this. And I'm looking forward to next week. Praise God. Can I go now? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I enjoyed the class so much because I was looking forward to, to being in the class because I really, you know, you think you know what you're doing and then you find out you might not know everything that you know 
that you think you know what you're doing. But I was blessed because I had to, um, Missionary O'Mary and myself, and I forgot to say this to um, um, Missionary Rogers, that we had the, we had the opportunity to do this uh, foundation for discipleship last night, last year in our Bible Institute. And so we had a little bit of a head start, but we really, I myself tonight was like a joy to my soul. I can't wait till next week. I will be on with bells ringing. It's Bible fun. Says, it's a lot in, of fun. The Bible says grow in grace and in knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Grow so we continue to do so. Uh, dig and hooker finally, and then we'll, we'll move on. Uh, yes, um, my internet kept going in and out, and I missed the five five W's. Uh oh, wait a minute. Am I still on? Yeah, we hear you. Oh, okay. That was my question. I internet kept going in and out, and I I missed the part about the five W's. And I, I did not. I did not give you the five W's and one right? H, but we oh, and you. one H, right? I did not give you the five W's and one H, but we, I will give them to you on next week. But until then, yeah. read with your mind, not your eyes, not just your eyes, but read the 16th chapter of Acts. Uh, so I, hopefully we will get these this this uh, that we've covered tonight this curriculum uh, sent to us and we'll send it to each of the different classes uh, the class you were in you'll get that curriculum to to kind of review and um, and be able to go over so we'll be ready for with your joy work for next week <laughs> glory to God for next week um, missionary Galloway was there homework in your class. homework but we're going to change it to joy work since y'all like i'm that. sorry joy work yeah but they, joy work. yes they did okay they got there's, joy work can you tell them again remind them some, some reading remind them what that is please oh uh, they 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 are to search the uh old testament for uh events that they see the holy spirit working Ooh, that was one yeah. thing and then they were going to uh thank god for the holy ghost Every time when they're meditating and, and thinking, they're going to have time to think on the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thou shalt meditate therein, day and night, huh? Glory to God. All right. God bless everybody. Uh, we want to ask everybody to get your, uh, your institute seed tonight. You'll get that seed together. Amen. So we can sow into the Institute. I wanted to hear from First Lady before we go in any further why you're getting that seed. But I want to hear from Lady Simkin so she can greet us and share whatever is on her heart. She was going back and forth as well. Glory to God. And so come on, Lady Simkins. Amen. Praise God. Well, my sisters, that's what I'm calling them, my sisters. I enjoyed you both so very much. I wanted to stay in this class. I wanted to stay in that class. I finally told Pastor, I can't write down everything. I just can't keep up with everything. So he assured me that we would be getting a copy of it so I can study to show myself approved, okay? Because this is awesome. I love it. It is so fresh. It is so good. And you're making it so clear. And I, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor, for choosing these women, powerful women of God, to help us grow closer and closer to our savior. Thank you. I'm just going to say thank you, Holy Ghost, uh, <laughs> yes. for, for leading and guiding. Glory to God. All right. Well, we bless the Lord for each one of you tonight. Thank you for your diligence. Thank you for remembering to come in. Uh, thank you for doing your joy work in both classes. Amen. I like that. That's, that's good. Glory to God, even as we move forward. All right. Um, there are a couple of things going on. We had our entrepreneurial empowerment first meeting tonight. So uh, there will be some notes coming out of that for those of you all. Uh, we announced it Sunday we'll, uh, again this morning in, in, uh, in the prayer. And uh, the next meeting will be the 22nd uh, at 5 p.m. So two, sun, two Tuesdays from now at 5 p.m. will be our entrepreneurial empowerment class. Glory to God. And then uh, I'll be meeting with the stewardship 
development class. We'll be kind of laying our thing out so that we can bring that in uh, first part of March. All right. So just so you all know where we're where we're going, the things we talked about that we were going to do this year, uh, we've got them moving forward. Glory to God. We've got them. Uh, they're on the tracks. The train is moving so that we can develop uh, in our spirit man as well as in our natural ability to grow, to support our families and to support ministry. Is that all right? Uh, glory to God. So we're going to we're going to be going forward. Sometimes we struggle with our finances because we have not uh, been done our biz business, our business the way God would have us to do it. Amen. We've not been the stewards that God requires of us and in doing it in his way. So we're going to have some information and that will be taught in the first part of March. Is that all right? All right. Any other comments or questions and concern? Brother Lewis, you got any questions? Man. <laughs> Any comments? I'm just picking on you there. Anybody else have any comments or questions? Can I make an announcement? Okay, Missionary Galway. Uh, yes. Oh, those of you that are part of the 